Hi, this is minister and author Eddie Dexter with a quick moment of insight. And you know that I share, have shared that most of the time that you will see me um, on the internet is um, in something that is recorded. And I should say, see me in the ministerial um, aspect. But if I come on live, there's an urgency in why I am. Others may not operate this way. This is just how the Lord uh, in this season has led me to operate. And it's beneficial not only for you, but mainly beneficial for me. But with that being said, I'm coming at you a little bit past 11 um, to share this with you because I I ran across something on the interwebs and it just really, really made me shake my head. And the Lord dropped this in my spirit and he wanted me to share this with you. So, reading uh, a comment about, well, there was a, a sporting event. And at the sporting event, um, people were giving some sort of a cheer. Nothing wrong with cheering at a sporting event. I mean, I cheer whenever i watching my Tampa Bay Rays or my Buccaneers uh, play. But um, if you're cheering something that's based upon a profanity, you're not being really a representative of Christ, aren't you? Well, they were cheering because they felt like they belonged. And a lot of a lot of people who profess to be Christian are doing so because they, um, well, there's an old uh, worldly song that says, "How deep is your love?" And it makes me wonder whether uh, these folks um, profess Christ because. It was the thing to do in their community, in their social circle. It was the thing to do. And it's really like a country club, if you will, uh, where people gather and and they, um, after the preacher preaches, they get together and they dine. And it's just a nice social gathering. Well... There was a survey, and it's done by a group called Lifeway Research, and they say they surveyed uh, 1,005 Americans, and they these folks who did this um, survey, 54% of them believe that religious freedom is eroding to be more precise they feel that Christians are facing growing intolerance and I've heard people um, verbally and by writ say that oh well we're being persecuted we we're being persecuted, but um, we're going to change that. We're going to put in uh, politicians and judges and everything, and we're going to turn things around. And And I shook my head, and I'm like, why? Why are these folks so interested and being accepted and being liked. And the Lord 
whispered this to me. He says, the reason why so many around the world, but particularly in America, are being turned off by Christians is because they're not liked because they want to be liked. Yeah, I don't hear. You want to be liked. You want everybody to feel as you feel or to believe as you believe. And, um, you know, that's human nature. I would like people to feel the way I feel about certain things or to believe the way that I believe about certain things. You know, <laughs> I guess every one of us could say, the world would be perfect if everyone was just like me. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way, does it? The purpose of being, well, the term Christian was really a, or was originally a term of derision. And I prefer the word saint because that's what the Bible really calls, we who calls those who believe. We are the saints of God. So for we who believe, we believe, I, I, I delivered a message and um, the Lord told me to um, put it back up. Um, what time is it? Okay, I still have time. He told me to put it uh, back up. Uh, for others to view it. And the message was titled, Why Jesus? And it, and it is really a message, not for the saints, but for those who are on the outside looking in. And so um, that's um, my focus is for those folks, um, for those who are on the outside looking in. Um, too often, uh, ministers, uh, 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 we preach to the choir, <laughs> but we're not preaching. Not we're not only preaching, not preaching to the folks in the pew, but we're not preaching to the folks on the street. So, when I come to you like this, this is me coming to you, who are in the pew to edify you. This is an edification this is for those that are for are within. Uh, but on the outside, you know, that's where I'm really fishing. I'm really fishing trying to get those on the outside looking in. God help me. So um a lot of people are have failed the Matthew 24, 24 test because they want someone who will do their bidding even though it's contrary to really what the word of God says. Well, what's the Matthew 24, 24 test? Well, I'm glad you asked. Matthew 24, 24 reads... Matthew 24, 24 says, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Um, a lot of folks have hung their star, uh, have uh, hung their wagon rather, upon a falling star, uh, whether that is someone in entertainment or let, let me be uh, point blank and frank, uh, politicians. There are people that have literally called our previous president the second coming. Yes, they have. And I did, I did a message on that January of, um, 
was it 22? Yeah, January of 21, where um, I spoke on that very thing. So a, a lot of folks have failed Matthew 24, 24 and are still failing it because the same people that would be behind the pulpit um, saying it's holiness or hell, um, and I believe that, <laughs> but there are, but the people that are prominent and famous that have been preaching that are now giving mulligan seat, uh, to people who say F uh, the new president. And some of them even allowed that to be cheered from their congregation during worship service. Lucy or devil. So, so see, th I, that's why I can, I can I just stand flat foot and, and tell you like it, um, IT is because I, I don't have a, a political affiliation and I'll call out a, a, a demon uh, whether they have an R or a D next to their name, to their name, how about that? Um, so many have already failed Matthew twenty four twenty four, and they failed because again they want to be accepted, and I mean that's human nature. We all want to be accepted, but the but when you are a saint of God, one your life goal is once you've accepted salvation through Jesus Christ, what comes after that, again, I alluded to the message, why Jesus, what comes, uh, the, the main thing of why Jesus is because you want to uh, be able to, when we transition from this mortal life to immortal, you want to be at peace with the one who created you, the one who created all. And God loves you and he does and he doesn't want none to perish. But uh, oh, it didn't mean to get too deep or to re redo this message of why Jesus, but I have to touch on it real quick. The reason why there is a place of eternal con condemnation and torment is it because God's a big, mean, nasty, but because his presence is, he, he is pure power, pure love, incorruptible, and so the corruptible cannot speak Holy Ghost. The corruptible cannot dwell in his presence. And because of that, there's no place for you to stand. How are you supposed to stand in the Holy of Holies? My God from Zion. And you're, car and, and you're corruptible. So, so the reason why people uh, uh, during the final judgment people are ushered off to uh, the lake of fire to join death and hell because death and hell shall be thrown into the lake of fire is because there's no room there's no room in the end there's no room for the incorruptible in the presence of God. So there's no other place for you. You can't walk down those streets of gold. You can't gaze at those pearly gates. There's no place for you. You there's this uh, anime that I uh, that I love called Inuyasha. And there was a a, 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 a saga in the story where they had to find the demon Raku and Raku took 
that which was holy and he twisted it around and he put up and he, he used he used a monk to eat to erect a barrier around the sacred mountain to shield him he convinced this monk and bewitched him and the, so the monk had a uh, barrier and so the thing is is that if a demon tried to enter into that barrier they would be purified because again it's, there, there's no you, the impure cannot stand the pure so if you have not been redeemed by the by the uh, blood of the lamb and your name is not written in the lamb's book of life you are still impure and you cannot dwell amongst pure your presence there would be torment in and of itself my god from zion so there's no other place for you you reject it the one who purifies you and i and so there's no other place for you hallelujah thank you jesus i see you apostle willis god bless you god bless you so so the first part of why Jesus spoke on this thing, on this, on the need to have Jesus as your savior. So when we translate from mortal to immortal, we can stand in the presence of God, made righteous, reunited with the one who loved us first. Glory to God. So that's the first part. The second part why of why we of why we become saints of God, why we're made the righteousness of God, is to make disciples of men. Now, we may not all be called to preach or to teach, but we are all called to live a peaceful and upright life, and we're all called to at some point in our walk, tell somebody why we live the way we live, why we are the way we are. We are to introduce people to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why. That, I mean, that is why. So when we, glory to God, are um, living this life, the only way that we can truly live it is not just by um, saying, okay, I'm saved. I, I, I'm saved now. I, I made it. You're saved. I, I keep on going back to these uh, previous messages that I taught. You're, when you get saved, that is a tithe of your time. That's just the 10%. That's just the beginning. Then you have the rest of your life, the other 90% that you want to give, that offering that is holy and acceptable unto God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that means that we are to become disciples. We are to be followers and imitators of Christ. That's it. We're, we're supposed to want to please him. And we want to be like him. And we want to do the things that he did. Our, our heart's desire should be to be like him. And we should always be mindful that of who we are. And what I mean by that is that sometimes uh, uh, folk can get, you know, um, high high on the hog, if you will. They can get big on themselves and think, well, I, I'm the grand elusive Pumbaa. But no. Every day I tell my I, I tell the Lord that I thank him. I thank him. I say, Lord God, I thank you for saving me. That I am a sinner saved by grace. I am no longer a practicing sinner. 
but I am a sinner who has been converted and I am saved by his grace. And because I acknowledge who he is in me, he has made me, not of my own goodness, not on my own wisdom, not on my own deeds, but I have been made righteous through Yeshua HaMashiach. Glory to God. So when I say that we, and I'm talking about the, the uh, we who are supposed to be the saints of God, um, a lot of folks, a lot of folks, are, are there's discipleship. They're, they're, they're not disciples. Oh, they got the hello, my name is on their uh, on their um, spiritual T-shirt or their spiritual dress. You know, you know, I had those employer tag, employee tags. Hello, my name is Bob. You, you, you know, they have that on the hello, my name is Christian. They have that on their on their tag. Hey, gosh, we call the ghost. But is it written on their forehead? Shayamosi, by the blood of Christ, did Jesus mark you? Or did you accept the mark of the beast? My God from Zion. So because so many have failed Matthew 24, 24, and they want to be accepted, well, well we're going to get judges and the judges are going to uh, make sure that everybody does what we believe. We're going to get uh, politicians and we're going to make sure they, they all do what we believe. But what did Jesus have to say about that? Luke, the sixth chapter, the 22nd and the 23rd verse. This is what Jesus had to say. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. That's good news. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company. Oh, yeah, you one of them. You too, you too holy. Uh, oh, you too self-righteous. I can't deal with you. They don't, want, they don't want you to be with them. That's good news. Listen, it says, and reproach and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil. My God from Zion. For the son of man's sake. See, a what's happening right now? Why, why this little survey here uh, that I alluded to by Lifelay Research and these um, people who um, are got their little feelings hurt saying, oh, we're being persecuted. We're the people... Uh, uh, the America doesn't love us anymore. The, the 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 reason why America doesn't love you is because you, um, so-called church, love power. Some of you all love the color of your skin, white supremacist. Looking at you, so, and, and you put up and and do a lot of things in the name of God. A lot of things in the name of Christ. My God from Zion. Yet he's holding the judgment bowls. She should come out he. Ready to pour out his wrath. My God from Zion. But so a lot of people. And I, I, I prophesied this back in 2000 and 2017. No. I prophesied this in 2014. I said God is pulling back the cover on a lot of things that have been going on with the so-called church. And we've seen over the years what has been going on and how people, especially young people, are, are like, you know what, all the things that they taught us, you know, they're not doing it. And a lot of young people are becoming jaded. And I, and I warned, I said, uh, pe people used to say, um, Christianity is a pro uh, is the cause of all the uh, problems of the world today, but now that is transitioning from not just Christianity, but they are saying 
religion, all religions, is the root of the pro of the world's problems. The reason why that shift has to take place is because of what is written in Revelation 13. It, Revelation 13 is not about, oh, okay, um, only the Christians are going to have to choose whether to take the mark or not. No, that's every religion in the world will have to decide they're going to follow Antichrist. And what happened recently in this country, Matt, how Matthew 24, 24 uh, exhibited itself is that a lot of folks have already failed that test. And so, uh, uh, so we have people now who profess to be Christ and, and they're saying, well, we're doing all of this in God's name, but God is going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I know ye not. Well, didn't we pass this law or didn't we set up this program? I know you not. Depart from ye, ye workers of iniquity. My God from Zion. So, continuing, uh, the 23rd verse, it says, Rejoice in that, in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. My God from Zion. So we have a lot of folks who got it backwards. They want to be like, they want society to accept them and to accept what they believe. Well, instead of living a life so that people would be curious to know what they believe, they uh, would rather um, set up a caliphate, uh, a Christian version of that, if you will. Uh, nothing about um, saying taste and see that the Lord is good. None of that. And all of that is into pledging allegiance to a man as opposed to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. So, yeah, a, a, a lot of the problems that's going on today, saints, is because there's a lot of so-called people who got the, hello, my name is Bob, label on their shirt. Hello, my name is, is Super Christian. But they're far from it. Their desire is to be liked and for what they like to be liked and for everybody to like that. Or and if they don't like it by choice, they're going to like it by force. And that's not how you win disciples. That is not how you are a fisher of men. You are a fisher of men by meeting people where they are. Living a life so that they can see that yes, uh, the words that they speak line up with the, the deeds that they do. And it makes them curious. And they are like, well, um, what is it about this peace? You also talk, you often talk about uh, this joy that I have. Well, what do you mean by that? Um, I, I happen to see you, um, how, how you love on your wife or how you love on your husband, how you love on your kids. I see how you are looking after people, how, how you're always um, gathering clothes to, to, um, clo to and taking it to uh, the Salvation Army or the Goodwill or you're, you're always doing something in the community and how where do you get that energy? Why, why do you do what you do? We should be, live a life as disciples of Christ that it piques the curiosity of, of, the, of our neighbors and that love that genuine love is what's going to change the hearts of men. Not 
um, the deeds that we do. That's tickling brass and a sounding cymbal. But the love that we show that emanates from the throne of Christ. Hallelujah. So I appreciate you all. It is now 1137. And I want to hurry up and also put up that. Uh, I know I did a, a mini recap of the message, Why Jesus? But he wants me to uh, take that video from YouTube and, and put it back here on, on the Facebooks. Uh, but I appreciate you all. Thank you, uh, Apostle uh, Willis. Yes, I'm reading what you just wrote here. Yes, God's judgment is as real as his blessing. Amen. Exposing our hearts and the sin, the church. The word says judgment begins <laughs> at, at the judgment begins at home. It begins with the church and then it goes abroad. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, Anita, I saw you uh, pop in um, uh, momentarily. God bless you. Keep me lifted up in prayer. Again, I don't come on live often, and that is just how the Lord has led me because he's, he says, well, whether you're live or whether you a, um, air a previously recorded message, um, the, the people that want to know are going to know. The people that want to feast on the word whether you're posting your own message or whether you're promoting other men and women of God, because I do that on my page. It's not about me. It's about um, all the men and women of God who are, pre are preaching and sharing the good news. The, um, they're going to want to hear that. Amen. And uh, Tammy, whenever you uh, uh, deliver a message, please, uh, please uh, tag me in it so that I can make sure that I put it on my insight ministry page. Because again, I'm about, I'm about getting the word out where it doesn't have to come from my lips. It just has to come from willing vessels. God bless. Hallelujah. So keep me lifted up in prayer. Um, I need your prayers. Really, really do. Um, and pray that, um, the outreach that I'm doing, I'm gathering a lot of young, excited followers on TikTok. I hate that platform, to be honest with you. A lot of um, weird governmental stuff um, that I don't like about it. But one, it's a it's a great promotional tool for my books. And two, um, a lot of young people um, use TikTok. And because they do, it presents me the opportunity and the privilege to uh, slowly pull them in and have them say, you know what, this guy, he's always, he's, uh, when he, he's always positive and he's always talking about the Lord. Yeah, he talks about anime and manga, but yeah, he also talks about the Lord and he makes me feel like maybe I need to know this Jesus too. So please keep me in your prayer so that um, whatever I do, it's as unto the Lord and not unto myself, and that I'm effective in what I'm doing. Amen? Amen. Okay. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. I um, may you have a fantastic week ahead. And until next time, continue to live victoriously. Hallelujah. An outlet for the Lord. And in this hour... We have to reach the young. This generation, much of it is lost as far as the kingdom of God goes. Thank you, Apostle Willis. Thank you so much. God bless you all. We'll talk to you soon.